presenting here excludes a messiah, historical teacher, leader, saviour that may have existed in history, but he's got nothing to do with the four Gospels. They are Gospels. They are songs. Otherwise it would say clearly, these are the writings of Jesus. I am Jesus, here is what I say. But you have Matthew, Mark, Luke and John hearing someone say that Jesus did something. So it's story writing. It's beautiful storytelling, but beautiful, exquisite. And all the killing that goes on there, you don't need to fear that God is an evil Jehovah and he's vindictive and he wants you to dash the babies against the crag and the Philistines and kill the Amorites and everything like that. <laughs> it's literary. So we're killing the lower nature. We're killing... This is the land of Canaan. Everything below the kidneys. Lust and, and we want power. We want lots of sex. We want... Uh, so we survive. Oh, let me have more potatoes for me than the other family can have because I may not have any for tomorrow, you know. So you greed. It's all here. In the, we've got to kill these children. They're poetic children. Children are immature, right? Their thoughts... When it says to slay the children and the Canaanites, it's saying to slay those immature, childish, undeveloped, lower-minded concepts, idols. Go to the football and believing that Manchester United is just, just a better club than Man City, you know? <laughs> and they believe it. They really get into it, don't they? I, I used to. You, you should have seen me at the footy. Back in Australia, you know, Aussie rules. Oh, <laughs> I hope no one filmed any of it. You know. <laughs> um, so we're going to kill those children if we're going to ever be responsible and if ever we're going to be treated as responsible, lawful beings. And the bar, when they realise that we're not lost at sea incompetent children, they'll disappear. <laughs> so we must kill those 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 enemies of the light that are in us. It is the sun, this is Volnay, it is the sun which under the name of Horus was born like your Christian God at the winter solstice in the arms of a celestial virgin who passed and who passed the childhood of obscurity, indigence and want, answering to the season of cold and frost. Pope Leo, this is the De Medici Pope. Hmm. And I think this is Raphael's painting of him. It is well known how profitable the fable of Christ has been to us. One of his bishops heard him say this, you see, and recorded it for posterity. <coughs> Pope Alexander V, uh, the sixth, this is the Borgia, another criminal elite family. At the helm, at the Vatican, the pirate ship of the planet. Almighty God, how long will this superstitious sect of Christians and the upstart invention endure? Because he's thinking, Shh, we, we started this, it's, a, it's an upstart invention. It's a concoction, it's a Ponzi scheme. Hence, we pay Peter's pence forever if we let them get away with it. You know? Because Constantine had a Pope Sylvester and they concocted... Um, the donation of Constantine. And that's why we're paying taxes, folks, because that letter exists, supposedly, the donation of Constantine. And, and that's Peter's Pence. And, and so and he's, he's saying, well, you know, he's a Borgia, of course. By the way, my mother's... Um, when I went to Calabria, I went to Borgia, where my mother's family comes from. That's the same Borgia. They were in Calabria for 400 years. How do you spell that? Borgia. B-O-R-G-I-A. It's the Borgia families. And that's the Pope. And so he's saying he's having a giggle. You know, it's like when George Bush giggles about, you know, how they're going to torture us. They have, they, they love it. Because we're just signing up for their services. Signing is sinning. Almighty God, I'll read this again because I love it, because this is what I'm thinking all the time, every day I wake up. <laughs> Almighty God, how long will this superstitious sect of killing, murdering Christians and cultures and other witches and the upstart invention endure? Well, as long as we let these elite, elite psychopathic families run amok on this planet. Thomas Paine, yes, he's the friend of uh, Count Volnay. 
The Christian religion is a parody on the worship of the sun, in which they put a man whom they call Christ in the place of the sun and pay him the same adoration which was originally paid to the sun. He is responsible singly and solely for the, American, the success of the American war against the English and for the freedom and the constitution that came thereafter and the republic that was founded. And Benjamin Franklin says, well, it's a republic if you can hang on to it because he knew a democracy was coming and that's corporate fascism at its best. Two parties of shit and you get to pick from either one. And they're laughing at you because it's the same crap. Right? The republic is still there though, guys. Remember that. All right, it might not be perfect, but there is a republic. America is a republic. The Vatican is... In 1871, they came back and stole it and made it a corporation with the 1870... No, 1881 Act, is it? Or 71 Act. Yeah, 1871 Act, just after Abraham Lincoln. The Vatican came back home to grab their corporation. All of the Americas are just a corporation of the Vatican. Const uh, Christopher Columbus signed that in, uh, 18, uh, in 1493 at Tor Torcedillas. The Treaty of Torcedillas. It's a Vatican corporation. No wonder it's still an inquisition there. The worst inquisition is happening in the States right now. They're really against this. In the States. Because because it's a republic. No republic shall res exist outside of the republic of the Holy See. It's the Holy See of the Inquisition that trumps them all, whether it be the Crown, whether, whoever. And that's what's going on. And Columbus went with the blessing of Rome as well to murder any indigenous people he found there and they wouldn't face any um, retribution from, you know, uh, for doing so. Their souls wouldn't be damned for doing so. Yeah, when I was in Ecuador, Cristobal, who bears the, ironically bears the name of the conquistador that came a killing, and I mentioned it to him, the high priest at the temple at La Mitad del Mundo on the equator. We went there to do some filming, and Cristobal uh, almost was whispering as he recounted what the Spaniards did in Ecuador. You know, it was almost though he still, you can still feel the bloodshed and, the, and the, just the decapitation of their beautiful culture of light. And he explained to us how his beautiful sundial, he built, he rebuilt the temple that the Spaniards destroyed. And I walked on the equator and felt lighter, you know. And he gave us, he, he, we spent about two hours and he just, and we, we filmed everything and he and explained this, exactly what we're talking about. March 21st, June 21st, September 21st, December 21st, those four points, the cross. And he explained how his sundial works. It's a rectangular sundial. Not like the Egyptians, just a rectangular thing like that. And I saw one down in Italy, in Calabria, like this. And they've got a little stick protruding out of, protruding from the top. Little stick. So it's like, um, well, yeah, it's like protruding. If that's the, if that's the, the rectangular of in pro profile, there's a little stick at the top like that. And as the sun goes over the top at midday, that's 12 o'clock. And then as it progresses, um, one hour 15 degrees, two hours 30 degrees. I thought, well, let's, let's stick with 15 degrees, you know, at one o'clock. And then when the sun has moved along the ecliptic two hours, two o'clock, three o'clock, and then of course six is here when the sun has set on the horizon and that's six o'clock and that stick cast a shadow and that's the that's the um the temple of the sun in ecuador that's their simple obelisk rectangular not an obelisk you see the egyptians use obelisks because they're not at the equator but when you're at the equator you use a rectangle because it follows that the sun is directly above at the equator <coughs> Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. It's the Christ within. The very basis of, of mythology lies in the adulterous worship of the solar great father and the, the lunar great mother, who were the first objects of worship that the history of race recalls. Of course it was. As late as the 5th and 6th centuries, the words 
our Lord, the Son, were used by the Christians in their prayers. This same phrase was also used in the liturgy until altered later into our Lord, our God. Bozina Brid Lover. And the last one I didn't mention was William Tyler Olcott, son law of all ages. Conrad Muth, 1471, said, There is but one God and goddess, but many are their powers. And names Jupiter, Sol, Apollo, Moses, Christ, Luna, Ceres, Proserpina, Tellus, Mary. But have a care in speaking these things. They should be hidden in. Uh, that's jumped, hasn't it? They should be hidden in silence, as are the Eleusian mysteries. Sacred things must needs be wrapped in fable and an enigma. Oh no, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, um, how much time do we have? You've been on for one hour ten minutes so far. Sorry. One hour ten minutes. All right, I'll do ten more minutes. Till break or till finish? Till questions. Oh. 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Okay. We must frankly admit that we have no source of information with respect to the life of Jesus other than ecclesiastical writings put together during that latter part of the fourth century. That's Tischendorf, the guy who discovered the Sinaiticus down on Sinai Peninsula about 200 years ago, one of, one of the three original 4th century codexes in existence. He found it. Great, great scholar. He spent so much time translating that text and, and, and he was, it was a gr great name. I remember when I was a Jehovah's Witness, that name was always on my, on my lips. You know, I've known about this guy for many, many, many years and the great work he's done. And, and that's what he says. No evidence, except for ecclesiastical writings, which are Gospels. Jesus is a mythical figure in the tradition of pagan mythology and almost nothing in all of ancient literature would leave one to believe otherwise. Anyone want to, wanting to believe Jesus lived and walked as a real living being must do so despite the evidence, not because of it. See Dennis McKinsley. Check out his stuff. He's really great to, to follow. He's fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> church fathers and historians that which is known as the Christian religion existed among the ancients and never did not exist from the beginning of the human race until the time when Christ came in the flesh i.e. making a reference point to a certain historical at which time the true religion which already existed began to be called Christianity it, the point here is clearly that it, there was never a time because it's the universal science of light. What are you, gonna, you, you can't invent it. It's there. It's the perennial philosophy. It is. It, just when one awakens to it and discovers it, but it's there. <clears throat> okay, Ignatius. Uh, so that was, um, that was Augustine. <laughs> That's a big... He'd be one of the biggest... <coughs> doctors of the 33 doctors of the Catholic Church's history, he'd be the number one. Mystery religions were very prevalent at the time of early Christianity. Ignatius of Antioch, Bishop of Antioch, Syria, states in a letter to the Ephesians, you are fellow initiates with the Apostle Paul. He yeah, initiates of the solar religion. Clement of Alexandria invited pagans to be initiated in the mysteries of Christianity. Then you will have the vision of my God and will be initiated by the, in those holy mysteries. Clement then goes on to say, he saw the light and the vision. He was sanctified by initiation. And Jesus marked the initiate with his seal. O truly sacred mysteries, I became holy by initiation. This is the true nature of Christianity, folks. Eusebius, the great champion of Christianity, admits in his book, that which is called the Christian religion is, is neither strange nor new. But if it be lawful to testify as truth was known, the truth was, it, it'd be lawful to testify the truth, it was known to the ancients. Eusebius says, the names of Jesus and Christ were both known and honoured by the ancients. And then in his dialogue to, with Trypho, says, there exists not a people, civilised or semi-civilised, who have not offered up prayers in the name of the crucified Saviour to the Father, the Creator of all things. Of course, because 
the same as crisscrossing, it's crucified. It's the saviour, light. Armonius Saccus, did we read this before? Yes? Augustine, well, we can go forward. Edward Gibbon, yeah, that's the guy. The decline and fall of the Roman Empire. The new sect of the Christians was almost entirely composed of the dregs of the populace, of fe uh, peasants and, and mechanists, of boys and women, of beggars and slaves, the last of whom might sometimes introduce the missionaries to the rich and noble families to whom they belonged. These obscure teachers are as mute in public as they are loquacious and dogmatical in private. <laughs> this describes Christians today. That's what they were like in the first centuries. Celsus tells you that. He says, the, 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 the dregs and the idiots. You know? Whilst they cautiously avoid the dangerous encounter of philosophers, they mingle with the rude and illiterate crowd and insinuate themselves into these minds whom their age, their sex, or their best education has the best disposed to receive the impression of superstitious errors. Uh, the Times Literary Supplement Review of Farrow's 1947 Life of Christ. It is amazing that neither history nor tradition should have embalmed for us even one certain or definite saying or circumstance in the life of the Saviour of mankind, except the comparatively few events in the four brief Gospels. There is no statement in all history that says anyone saw Jesus or talked with him. Nothing in history is more astonishing than the silence of the contemporary writers of the events relayed in the four Gospels relative to Jesus and his disciples and his work. And once again, I'm embarrassed because I have so much more. Today I am, I guess. I've done Islam, I've done Hindu, uh, I've done Judaism, I've done the Kabbalah, I've done the Tarot. So this is a series. I'm making a series here. And today we're dealing with the sun uh, and putting the sun back into, into perspective. In Glastonbury we did the zodiac. In uh, Birmingham we did the nursery rhymes. <coughs> so, and this is because it's going to be a series. Yes, please. Um, what's at the centre of the sun? Well, according to Pierre Luigi Egina, a heart which beats at the same rate as ours, which will be 72 beats a minute. According to Eric Dollard, it's empty. According to Walter Russell, the causal central sun. No, no, that it is. Lots of stuff. The petrol companies that run the institutions and the same pirate families want us to think that the sun is destroying hydrogen at its core and there's this big compression, nitrogen uh, compression and it's, turning, and it's turning hydrogen in, into uh, helium, all of this hydrogen. What a crock, you know, they're really just... And they're doing, they have fun when they teach idiots this and idiots go repeating like pap puppets the same spew that they get taught uh, at the... Um, the sun is cold. The only arcing that occurs, as according to Eric Dollard, is um, in the um, CMEs. There's no, there's no um, fusion arcing in the core of the sun. It's, it's empty. <laughs> yeah, Saturn is set. He is the black sun. There's two suns. Saturn destroys the work of Horus. If he doesn't, then we don't get motion. We don't get the illusion. It's just a dance. It's all just... The universe is a gospel. Universe, one song. That's a gospel universe. We're just writing gospels, following gospels. Everything we do starts in fire with Jehovah, the God of fire. Everything. Every thought, anything that ever happens starts electrically with fire. Then it goes through earth, air and water. And it does that in three phases. Cardinal, fixed, mutable. Growth, uh, birth, growth, decay. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. God, generation, operation, dis dissolution. And, and, and that's the three phases. The cardinal signs, the fixed signs, the mutable signs. It repeats. Cardinal, fixed, mutable. Cardinal, fixed. Because cardinal is birth. The birth of autumn. The birth of winter. The birth of spring. Cardinal. 
you see? And so that's how creation is getting things, things done. Light comes from zero point in the center of suns. It always starts here, it does a positive thing, and then it flips over and does the negative other half. And it's positive and negative. And this is divided into 12 stages, 12 posts. Because there are four elements blended in here. And there are four, three modalities, cardinal, fixed, mutable. And there are two halves, and there are 12 segments. And see, so you get this dance of numbers. The universe is made by numbers. This is sacred geometry, this is numerology. This is the tarot. I've explained that already. The tarot, you count, you, these signs are numbered. Aries is one, Taurus is two, Gemini is three. You add one plus two plus three plus four, all the way to 12, you get, 100, you get the number 78. That's the tarot cards, because that's the Torah. The Torah is the will, the wheel, the rotor of God. Yes. You know the Kabbalah tree of life. Sorry. The Kabbalah, you know, the tree of yes. life. Apparently, St Paul's Cathedral, the pillars of St Paul's Cathedral, are in the same place. Yes. The pillars in St Paul's mm -hmm. Cathedral are in the same place mm -hmm. as the Kabbalistic tree of yeah. life. That's yeah. what the sister just said. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, oh, you first. Yeah. Oh, I don't know who's first, but right. I was pointing. Okay. Just a question about um, a modality in, in chart. If a soul is born with a predominant modality, let's say cardinal. What would you, I mean, can you give us some interpretation about that? If there is a yeah. Of so let's let's flip over to the science of astrology, the mother of all sciences, shall we? And that's where and that's where the tour is going to end. I'm going to be pre presenting the sync rota. <clears throat> so remind me that we're talking about the, the modalities, please. Um, this is the sync rotor, which will sync all of the sciences. Here is biochemistry, here is astrology, here is medical astrology. Um, that's it. And also, can I add, if you can incorporate in your interpretation your view on... Uh, are you listening? Yes, I am. Yes, please. yes I would. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> my view on... I don't like to speak about my view. I like to speak about what I know. <laughs> Not my opinions. Uh, when you talk Some... about modality, if there is a predominant energy, let's say, um, I don't know, modality of cardinal size or whatever, um, sometimes in a horoscope you will see completely discoherent, different um, signs, conjunctions, planetary aspects, which actually completely 180 degrees oppose and contradict predominant force in a chart. I'm sure you've encountered that. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think so, yes, I have. Yeah, if you could shed light on that, I'd, I'd really appreciate that. Okay. Um, ah, all right, I'm just trying to see why the sink rotor doesn't come up. But anyway, that's the... All right, let's do this then quickly, because what, what have we got time-wise? Andy? Um, 15, 20 Oh, right, okay. All right. <laughs> the secret of creation is in the wave. That is the symbol of the earth, because it would have to be, wouldn't it? They knew their stuff. That's the earth. So what I'm doing now with this is I've put in the Tropic of Cancer up here and the Tropic of Capricorn down here. I've made that little circle that we were playing with over here. I've made it bigger. This is still the equator. And see, these, these are the four cards. So people born in those signs, they are the strongest. More force is in here. Force is in those signs. This is the kingly axis. This is the priestly axis. This is we being kings and priests, spirit and matter. Because Aries is krios, the judge. Criticize, critique, judge, the ram. Firmicus Maternus says the Greeks call it the ram because it judges. He judges between 12 hours of light, 12 hours of darkness. He's the judge of balance. And so is she. Venus over here in the scales of Libra, whoops, and the scales of balance at the middle, at the very middle, it's the start, it's the middle of the ecliptic, balancing, you see, so this is spiritual, fire, air, they're masculine, so this is ecclesiastical, 
Ptolemy says this is the ecclesiastical, religious, spiritual axis. And that's why, if you, if you think for a minute that Uranus is now in Aries and <clears throat> Pluto is in Capricorn, in the other, so, and there's a square going on, we can, if we get a chance we can talk about that, but the, what's happening is those two destroyers, Uranus and Pluto, in these two signs, the sheep and the goats, the solstice and the equinox, the ecclesiastical and the priest, is, is going to actually transform and destroy what you see out there in terms of spiritual institutions and political institutions forever. Forever. Once these seven squares are finished, I think we're in the third or the fourth square. And the squares, very, very rare, long, seven squares between planets is, is pretty much a record. It's a grand square now, Persephone square, I think it's called. Yes. And it's very destructive, and, and Capricorn is, is the political. You'll see a lot of changes here with Pluto. Last time Pluto was in Capricorn, we had two revolutions, the French and the American. But these people that are born here have this force. They are cardinal. They like to start things, because this is where the start is. Arians love starting things and not finishing them. <laughs> these guys, the mutables, they finish. The mutable signs, they finish things. You see? And these guys, like Taurus, this is fixed. They change things for the sake of not changing things. So they, you know, they're steady. They're in the middle. They hang on to things. You know, these guys start with a lot of force. They really are good leaders in the community. You know, they're, they're, they're always, you can see the way they walk, these people. They're directional. The cardinal points are directional. Very strong and vital, these people. They have more energy. All things being equal, these areas would actually be the strongest, according to Thomas H. Burgoyne. Fire, because fire is vital. Um, and so you've got Cancer here and Libra over here. So, so your question was, how would you explain the difference between the cardinals and the, you know, the fixed people? You see the Taurians, the earth, solid, the, the, the Leos are also fixed. Leo is fire, you know, intense passion, fire, rot, lion, roaring. You know, these people are, you know, all summer. It's all about summer. You know, they're very summery and golden. I find, I love their energy. It's very light. It's golden. When these guys glow, they're very light. You know, it's, it's like it's being next to you know, light, uh, people emanating a golden light. These, these guys are silver, really silvery. I, you know, I don't know whether you guys can see what I'm actually saying. I'm sure you can in your own special way, but I get silver from these people. It's beautiful, motherliness, you know. Um, but, but see, this fire is different to this fire. This is cardinal fire. And so... Cardinal would be, you know, like a fire hose. You get a fire hose and it's got a very um, narrow exit point here so that water is pressured and then it comes out really strong at the start. This would be cardinal. And then fixed would be when the water just goes around like this and it's, the water's still composed, that curve, but it's, it's, it's much more in abundance. So the fire here is much more in abundance. It's stronger, it's summer, it's midday, or midday's here, but two to four is, is sort of, you know, pretty much the hottest part of the day. So this is fixed. And then mutable, mutate, change, these people, uh, they would be mutable, you know, so the water's breaking up, because this is, this is breaking up of the springtime. And so you can see it in their natures. These people are mutable, more adaptable, more flexible. Uh, more changing. F Gem Geminians can be flippant, you know, with their minds, you know, changing their mind, because it's mind, it's an air sign. Whereas Pisces will change their emotions, you know. Two fish, mutable water, water is emotions. Astrology is based on the ecliptic, and when you study the wave and you look at the wave, all secrets will be revealed. This is where astrology comes from, it comes from this comes from these energies and light and how it, you know, how it works. Of course, Aryans have got, you know, so much vitality. I mean, the sun in the morning is, whew, you know, six to eight in the morning. This represents six to eight every morning. 
Aryan energy is there every morning, regardless of what sign sun's in. All right, any more? Ah, yes. Um, yeah. Distilled water. Um, look at if you're ready for it. If you're vegan, look at try and be liquidarium. Um, and if you if you if you can't, well, try and eat as much stuff that is uh, non-hybridized. Check out the work of Dr. Sebi, where he talks about most of the plants and food that we're eating are hybridized. You know, big fruits like these, these are hybridized because fruits are really, like little crab apple would be the original apple. The little plum tomato, cherry tomato would be the original tomato. These are original. These are better to go smaller than big. Big is, is hybridized and it's just going to add to alkalinity in the body, according to Dr. Sebi, who has cured every disease known to man. Now that's a biggie to throw in at the end of the presentation, isn't it? But just check it out. He's done it. Supreme Court couldn't get it. They couldn't get him in the Supreme Court. He won. Yep. Yeah, for sure. The, the 24 hour sine wave, yeah? So I did it like that on the equator, as the maps show. There's the Tropic of Cancer. There's the Tropic of Capricorn, and um, 6 is here, 12 midday, 6 p.m., 12 midnight, and then back to the start again. So you can depict, you can depict it linearly like this, or you can pick it, depict it circularly like this. Or you can even start from here and start Aries over here, and finish with Pisces over here, which would be more natural. It's like, you know, in England we drive on the left, in Australia we do too, but in the States they drive on the right. <laughs> Take your pick. But it's, it's the figure eight. Lemniscate. It's a lemniscate. It's called a lemniscate. Yes? You want to see where the yacht is in the sky? I was thinking of the one, you know, so Pluto <coughs> and Capricorn and Saturn and... Oh, the astrological yacht. Yeah. Okay. Well, wh why is there a yacht up there now? It was a yacht on the 21st of December last year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very interesting. I Yeah, it's very powerful. It's the finger of God, isn't it? Yeah, so um, it points to some big event. I, I, I think I missed it. Sorry. Today, apparently, there's a grand sex dial, but I checked it. No, it I checked it three times and it wasn't. No. Twenty second no. of July. Gotcha. Torbs, you were wrong. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Facebook. Thank you, Facebook. Yeah, we checked it. We tried in early in the morning. We tried midday. We tried late during this day, and there's no grand sex dial. Pretty looks close though. Looks like one. Check it out. There was one on the 29th of July. It's definitely a square um, in the last two days, and it's very, very powerful. Um, yeah, so it's the square you were talking about. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There's a grand cross today. Yeah. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. Oh, look. Check out today's... Oh, we haven't got internet. But check out today's um, stars. Oh, oh, very powerful. Mars has just entered Leo. That's going to be fiery. I have Mars in Leo in my chart, so that's going to mean something. Um, Venus is already there, I think. It's square, exact square to Pluto today. Right. Exact square from eight, eight, 9 degrees of Libra to 9 degrees of Capricorn. Right, there you go. Oh boy. Um, and, yeah? Oh, yeah, square to Jupiter 12, Cancer, uh, which is an exact square to Uranus at 12, Aries. Right. So you actually have a grand cross. It just is. About, it's not exact, but... And it's, it's a cardinal far, cross. Yeah. It's cardinal Cancer, cross. Aries, Capricorn, Libra. It's a cardinal. They are the strongest. Mm -hmm. By far the strongest. Yeah. 
pay particular attention, said um, Marcus Manilius, to the cardinal points. There is where the force is in our science. That's why it's the cross. These are the power here. Longest day, shortest day, equal days. Of course they're portals. Of course they are the, the four holy days, the four gospels, the four whatever. <laughs> Yes, thank you. When you were speaking about reality, uh, is the sun uh, in a double star system? Yeah, well, have you seen those videos getting around lately in the last couple of weeks about this um, guy from NASA who's leaked out that there's another sun, that it's a jewel and it's coming our way and the, the planets are overlapping the orbits of ours and so there might be some stuff happening. Well... <laughs> 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 Definitely stuff happening. Whatever happens, we fly on into eternity, so... It's all good, it's all good. If it's gonna, if it's gonna contribute to fear, <laughs> lose it. Because love is all there is. It is. It's all there is. And, you know, the, the more we express it, the more we will heal. It is, it is something that um, we're all, you know, we all are longing for this world to be balanced once again and for there to be love and light. And uh, we all suffer because there's no balance in love. And so um, syncretism will, will um, help that, enable that light. Light is love. There's only one thing and it's light. And light is love, is sound, is knowing, is power. And that's our nature. So, you know, whether Nibiru's coming along or, you know, there's a second sun and there's, uh, we're in the meteorite um, shower now, and it's all good. We've always been. That's it. Thank you. Yep.